The Terminal Man by Michael Crichton. This is a pretty good book, you guys. I really enjoyed it. So this is book two in my Michael Crichton read-along that I'm doing along with... Um, I'm following Mike's book reviews, his uh, Michael Crichton. He calls it the Michael Crichton reread. For me, it's a read-along because I haven't read most of these books. There's one of these that's coming up later that I have read before. Uh, but anyway... Um, so there's a few things you should check out. First of all, check out Mike's channel in general. It is wonderful. He uh, does great videos. Check out his introductory video to this read-along, this reread. Re um, and check out his video for this specific book, for The Terminal Man. And uh, I will put links to all of those things in the description. So, ch so check those out. And check out my playlists. Um, pretty much everything I do on this channel, almost everything I do on this channel, is a part of a larger playlist. And this is a part of a playlist. I have my review for the Andromeda Strain as the first video in the Michael Crichton, re uh, the Michael Crichton Read Along playlist. And this will be video number two in that playlist. This is book number two. And I liked it a lot more than I liked the first one. Better than The Andromeda Strain, I thought. You could, you could tell it's the same writer, right? It's a lot of the same style. Um, it is a little bit on the dry side, I gotta say. It's, it's what you would expect of a book published in the early 70s, right? It's a little dry. Um, some of the character work is pretty weak, to be honest. But honestly, it's a good, it's a good story. Sorry, I keep messing up my words. It is a good story. I enjoyed it. Actually, it got really good about halfway through. The beginning was a little slow, but it got really good about halfway through. And I read the second half all in one day, uh, which is not something I usually do anymore. I read, you know, the last 130 pages or so in one in one day. So uh, it was captivating. It was very, very intriguing. So let me tell you a little bit about the story, and then I'll tell you a little bit about my reaction to it. This guy, Harry Benson, he's like, sort of a regular guy. Um, well, he's not really regular. He's kind of a genius, actually. Um, he works with computers. He's a very smart guy. But, you know, physically looking, he's just a normal kind of guy. Uh, very unassuming, very, uh, you know, polite and quiet and all this stuff. But he has uh, suffered a little bit of brain damage from a car accident a couple years ago. And as a result of this, he occasionally has seizures. But these seizures are not normally, not like convulsions, not what you would normally think of as a seizure. He like blacks out and exhibits extremely violent behavior and doesn't remember it. So uh, these doctors want to do this experimental procedure on him, this operation where they actually install some wires into his brain and they hook him up to a little computer that is in his neck or his shoulder. I think it was in his neck. And uh, the computer will zap his brain whenever he's about to have a seizure and prevent him from having a seizure. So it's, it's this cool idea. But there's a little bit of a twist here. Harry Benson, because of his brain damage, he's also got some sort of weird delusions that he believes the machines are kind of working to take over the world. So he works with computers and he works with machines and he has this sort of love-hate relationship with them. Um, and so like at his house, he has no modern technology at all. He doesn't own a microwave or even like an oven or anything like that, but he works with computers all day and he's actually really brilliant at it. So anyway, um, you know, he thinks computers and machines are going to be taking over the world. So, uh, as a result, they do this operation, this, uh, psychiatrist, Dr. Ross, Dr. Janet Ross, she recommends that they do not do it. She doesn't think he's a good candidate. But these other doctors, Dr. McPherson, who is the like head of the whole uh, department, Dr. Ellis, who's the person who actually performs the surgery, and another guy named Dr. Morris. And it's kind of funny because I don't really know what his role was, like why he was involved. He was like another surgeon guy. Um, I mean, I know what he does in the story and stuff, but there's, there's four main doctors, Ross, McPherson, Ellis, and Morris. Uh, and to be honest, some of the character work uh, like I said, it's a little bit weak. Some of the doctors, it's kind of like they sort of bleed together. Like they act like the same people kind of. Um, it's hard to distinguish them is what I am trying to say. But anyway, 
they are all gung ho about the surgery. It's supposed to be this big prestigious thing, and they're excited because it's going to bring a lot of great publicity to their hospital, to their program, and all this stuff. And they're thinking, yeah, we 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 want to do this. Well, they do the surgery, uh, but now this guy Harry Benson, because of his sort of strange delusions, he thinks that they're kind of trying to make him into a machine, uh, and so. He thinks, you know, this is a step closer to the machines taking over. And then, I don't want to spoil it at all, because it is a little bit later in the book that we discover uh, there is something wrong that happens. Not, not really wrong with the surgery, but an unexpected result of the surgery. And uh, good old Harry Benson starts to go a little crazy on us. And actually, uh, his violent tendencies get worse. So it becomes a thriller where he's running around causing some havoc, causing, havoc, causing some mayhem, and uh, hurting some people. So it's a, it's a pretty good book. It's, it's pretty cool. I really enjoyed the sort of scientific speculation of the power and the influence of computers. It felt very sci-fi-ish, you know? Uh, and I, I just like that, that sort of philosophical musings about what that really means in this uh highly you know this was in the 70s this was published in the 70s and now 50 years later we uh <laughs> we are so much more um computerized in everything we do right and the things that he talks about in this book it feels like yeah like all these weird predictions and things uh, that they're speculating on in this book, it's like, yeah, that's our world. Like, that has happened. That is happening. Uh, so it's just, it's that's fun to me. That's one of my favorite things about sci-fi is when an author sort of projects ahead and thinks about what might happen in the future and gets it right. That is that is really enjoyable. So I really enjoyed that part of the book. I also just like the suspense. There's uh, a couple parts at the end that were legitimately kind of frightening. I was reading it late at night, the end of the book, and there's a part where, you know, I don't want to give spoilers, but a certain character is uh, in a place trying to find Harry Benson, and the lights go out, and he can't see anything, and he knows Harry Benson is nearby, and he doesn't know if he's going to attack him or if he's going to run away or what. And I was reading this late at night, and I thought, you know, what if all my lights just went out? Like that would, and, and I had that thought, and it, what if there's somebody in my house, somebody who wants to do me harm, and all the lights go out? Like that was scary. That was a scary moment. It was legitimately a little bit, legitimately a little bit frightening reading that. So, uh, I liked it. And Janet Ross, Dr. Ross, is a cool character. I really liked her. Um, she's a well-written female character. I feel. Uh, and I think that's something that's kind of rare, especially back in the 70s by a male author. Another thing that I thought was really interesting, there's a part where this Dr. Ellis guy, he talks about how uh, people with violent behaviors, violent tendencies, have uh, a disproportionately large amount of those people also have brain damage. And I don't know if this is something that Michael Crichton made up for the book or if there was evidence to support that back in the 70s, but there's actually evidence to support that now. Uh, a few years ago, I read a book called Unfair by Adam Benferrato, and I highly recommend it to everybody. It's nonfiction. It is really good, and it completely changed the way I view the justice system, police and prisons and you know courts and everything. Very good book. And actually, there's a chapter in there where they talk about uh, a disproportionately high uh, amount of people in prison have suffered serious head trauma in the past. Uh, and that people with violent behaviors, often it is uh, not, it's not the sole cause of it, but it could be linked that they've had uh, brain damage in the past. And so I thought that was really interesting. Um, and I don't know if that data existed back in the 70s or not. I, sh I should look into that. But it is something that has been proven to be true uh, in our modern age. Really, bottom line, this is just a good book. I liked it a lot better than The Andromeda Strain. One of the reasons I didn't really like The Andromeda Strain very much is I felt like the threat of this germ, it was interesting, it was cool, but it just didn't feel, you know, connected. It didn't feel personal. And this story, it feels very personal because it's this guy who is having these 
delusions and these problems. And they are trying to convince him, hey, it's going to be okay. We can, we can help you. We can fix you. And he's like, you just want to work on me like a computer. You're trying to turn me into a machine. And, you know, it's, it's a person. The, it's it's a, not a villain, really, but it's an antagonist. In the Andromeda Strain, it was a situation that they were dealing with. In this book, there's a personified antagonist. And uh, it, it, just, it just made it so much more immediate and so much more meaningful to me as a reader. Uh, I think that's why I enjoyed this book so much more than the Andromeda Strain, at least one of the reasons. I felt like the writing style was still pretty similar. You could tell it was Michael Crichton. Uh, you could tell, you know, some of his strong points and some of his weaker points. The characters were a little flat, you know, but uh, it was still, it was thrilling. It was a thrilling thriller and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to the next book, which will be The Great Train Robbery. So I'm going to be getting that book from the library, uh, hopefully soon, probably this week. I'm going to read it up and read it up. That's a weird way to say that. I'm going to read it and then I will be posting a review on it this month.